So our last panel for the day is jam-packed with leaders from literally across the globe in social impact and blockchain. Uh, in fact, it was oversubscribed. Um, so we'll have to have more folks come to our next event. Um, this panel will be moderated by Justin Steffen, uh, BitGive board member and partner at Ice Miller LLP. Justin was instrumental in making the dream of this event become a reality. Um, he was also the very clever creator that came up with the great name of DeFi uh, for our conference. Um, so Justin, I'll hand it over to you to introduce yourself and the panelists. Thanks, Connie. Can everybody hear me all right? I'll look at Connie for the okay. Okay, great. Yeah, thrilled to be here. Thanks for the intro, Connie. I am where I am a lawyer, so I'm wearing my lawyer suit, so you all know these are real. This isn't a background. Look, I can fit everything. Okay. Uh, enough jokes aside. This is a really exciting panel, uh, and I'm thrilled to be able to moderate it. Um, and you don't want to hear from me. You want to hear from all these great speakers um, and hearing about all the different ways that they are are using. Uh, these technologies to change the world. So I'm going to go right into it. And the first thing I want to do is have them introduce, I know a little bit about them because I've been talking with them and researching them and, you know, online stalking them, I guess. I don't know. Um, but I want you to hear what they're doing. Um, let's, I'm just going to go right down the, right down the row. So Moran, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your background, and then also I want to hear from each of you, and I'll start with you, Moran. Um, how are you, what are what, the projects that you're working on now, how are they making a social impact in the world? Because that's our, that's our theme, social impact. Uh, yeah, for sure. First of all, I just want to say thank you to Connie and Brittany for organizing this event. Uh, I was very excited to be a part of it. And Justin, hats off to you for coming up with the term DeFi. I have not seen that yet. And I was like, damn, I want to be a part of this conference. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> I guess, how did I get involved in the humanitarian space? Uh, I think I, I always had a knack for looking at how technology could you know, speed things up. Uh, there's a book that I'm reading right now called Zero to One. And the idea is if we continue to do the things that already work, uh, it's not sustainable for the longevity of the human race. And so you know, when, when I see things like machine learning and cryptocurrencies improve how people are accessing you know, payments, or information, I was like, you know, this is this is a technology with a lot of potential. And so I first dabbled in it uh, when I was working at Deloitte. Uh, we had a Bitcoin ATM downstairs, and you know, I, I had my first experience interacting with this digital money. And I was like, cool, this is, you know, this is real. This works. Uh, we can send this money to whomever I want as long as I have internet. Uh, when I got involved, it was still dealing with a lot of UX issues, but I was like, you know what, here's somewhere I can make an impact and actually make impact at scale. Once I, I kind of got a few years under my belt working at Deloitte, you know, looking at how different businesses can use crypto and blockchain, uh, I was like, how can I take this to the next level? And, and I saw that UNICEF was actually doing a lot of work uh, with blockchain and cryptocurrencies, and they were finally looking to dedicate a team to exploring this. Uh, in different countries, within different UN agencies. And I was like, you know, this is a perfect opportunity to take some of the technical and product skills that I have at Deloitte and, you know, really amplify that impact. And so right now I work for the Office of Innovation. I lead a lot of the product and engineering work that we do uh, specifically with blockchain. And our Office of Innovation has two big missions right now. The first one being getting schools around the world connected to the internet. And then the second thing is to, uh, once schools and communities are connected to the internet, ensuring that they have open source solutions that they can use to solve problems uh, in the context that they need. And so our team, uh, we have a team of like five or six people that are looking at specifically blockchain and cryptocurrencies, and we're seeing how it plays a role in getting schools connected to the internet. And then um, I guess having them leverage open source solutions to improve the lives of people around the world. That was, that was actually, that was great, Moran. And I will note that as a former uh, accounting firm member, he pointed out that I was wearing my lawyer costume today. So very good. Um, not too jokey, but I do want to keep it light. So Yvonne, you're next. Uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, about your, your, his, your background, uh, your, your, and then how you're also making a social impact uh, using blockchain, cryptocurrencies, uh, decentralized technology. Sure. Uh, um, I thought I, was, uh, I will be talking about the blockchain for humanity, but uh, if I have to share my personal story, it's uh, not that short and uh, not that long. It, uh, in, uh, in a 
crypto space. Uh, it started when I hit uh, the when I get to Argentina three years ago, three and something years ago. Before I was uh, just traveling around the world, uh, and uh, I was always somehow involved in uh, humanitarian activities, but uh, I was not very happy with the results. And uh, I wanted, uh, always wanted to contribute a little bit more. And then I, uh, in Argentina, I started to collaborate with the Argentinian startup, blockchain startup, and I started to learn about the blockchain and Bitcoin and crypto. And I had the opportunity to uh, meet people like Rodolfo, is uh, right now here, and I was listening to his talk in the Bitcoin space in, uh, in in Buenos Aires. And then I started to collaborate with Blockchain for Humanity and uh, I realized that this is, the, this is the real contribution to the world because uh, what we're doing is we are promoting this uh, blockchain technology for social good and I've been doing that by showing uh, real use cases, project uh, that creating that social impact and uh, contributing change in our society with the usage of blockchain technology. So uh, I'm really happy to, to be a part and I'm, I'm, I'm also a lucky one because this is uh, at the beginning, even if uh, this is almost more than 10 years old, the technology is uh, still beginning for the rest of the world. And I'm very lucky and happy to be here and, and to participate in. That was lovely. Um, thank you. Thank you, Ivan. Um, I know you know Rodolfo, but I'm going to go to Itzel uh, next. Itzel, could you tell us a little bit about, um, about your project and how you're changing? I liked how you put it, Ivan, how you're changing society, uh, how you're making a social impact. Yes, thank you, Justin. Well, uh, I'm Itzel. I'm internal coordinator of Blackchain Program. And blockchain is a global alliance uh, for the development of blockchain ecosystem uh, led by the Innovation Laboratory of the ID Lab uh, and aims to accelerate the adoption of blockchain technology in Latin America and the Caribbean and maximize social inclusion. Um, blockchain focus in two main areas. The one is community, uh, helping with local, national, and regional to provide strategic and technical support in the development of blockchain-based solutions. Uh, we also organize uh, workshops, challenges, and we provide uh, free tools and educational resources so as to strengthen capacities. And also our proposal is uh, based on our infrastructure that is provides free blockchain uh, uh, includes public permission at the networks, self sovereign identity, and also regulated tokenized fiat money. Uh, being part of this project is very excited because we are looking to enrich people's lives and also make me happy. <laughs> if you want happiness uh, for a lifetime, uh, you need to help someone. So I wake up every morning willing to contribute with my grain of fun and to try to create a domino effect. Uh, because we are allowed to offer since this uh, blockchain initiative uh, for the rest of the community. Thank you so much. So that was, I, I actually, when I'm right, when I'm, when you see me kind of putting my head down, I'm taking notes and I wanted to kind of, you said something that I, I have to kind of repeat. If you want happiness for life, help someone. I thought that was really beautiful. Um, it was wonderful. So, um, I want there's two, we have two more panelists, and then we'll start getting into the kind of the nitty gritty here. But um, let's go to Rodolfo. Rodolfo, tell us a little bit about yourself, your project, and how you're trying to to change society. Sorry, I was without sight. Sound. Bueno, my <laughs> I'm founder of I'm in Bitcoin since 2011, and I in 2013 I started giving back what Bitcoin gave me, yes, and I founded several projects, around six or seven non-for-profit projects, yes, starting with, with the Argentina and the first NGO in the region in Latin America, <coughs> I helped me to understand and, and, and showing that this was for, for a good and not, for about the, not about the money, 
eh, the Latin American Bitcoin Conference, the La Bitcoinita, which is a band that travels Latin America eh, talking with individuals eh, one by one, <laughs> eh, but, but giving options to those who don't have a usually reach to this kind of, of, of talks and, and knowledge and doing really a grassroots movement. And it's really, really impressive what it, what it achieves. And then we are, I, I have some other projects somehow related to, to, to either La Bitconf, like Blockchain for Humanity is a project that started in, in La Bitconf and we, we support those kind of, of events. Uh, and the other ones are related to, to Bitcoin Argentina. One is even done uh, together with the guys of Lackchain. So it's uh, perhaps you don't know it yet, <laughs> but uh, the Inter-American Development Bank uh, not only supports, not only creates this Lackchain platform, but they actively support uh, projects related to social impact. And one of those was ours, which was mainly created on top of, of Bitcoin. Um, and, and they risked themselves trying also blockchains that are not only uh, DLTs, no? So we are doing a, a multi-blockchain uh, project related to digital IDs uh, in slams, yes, self-sovereign IDs in slams, uh, with the focus of driving, of uh, generating financial inclusion, um, and also certifying the um, residentials, I mean, where they live in these slums where they have no addresses and no, no other kind of information. And, and it's being fairly successful right now. Uh, we have a, a, a big amount of people using the platform and, and we're playing, we're working using Bitcoin or using the, the, the blockchain. Uh, we're working also on a platform that allows them to certify that there is a kind of not game of, of saving platform in, in the region, which in Argentina is called La Ronda, where people put in a certain amount of money. Yes. And one of them, like by, by let yes, they, they get the full amount of money. So it's like getting a credit and no 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 fees on it yes and and this is very informal and now we have uh, turned this into a into a formal process where you can then share this information that you are a good payer to someone else in this informality yes and and that's also very attractive as a project and it allows you to get cheaper uh, cheaper fees if you are if you are super interested if you want to take a formal um, a formal credit in in a bank or in a or in other credit platforms yes so so they are taking our information as a basis to certify this information that usually as it is informal they can trust in but now that it's in blockchain they can certify that these people pay that these people uh, is achieves the, the the payments even if it's in an informal way of paying then we have another project called uh, Comedor, uh, Cambalache actually, uh, which is a slum kitchen, a sl uh, soup kitchen. Yes, and now we, we did our first uh, attempt with around 14, 14 people. Now we're going to uh, 15 soup kitchens in, in one same area, trying to build a full economy around it. Yes, uh, we, we bought like 100 cell phones to give out also because there's a big issue in, in, in not in having cell phones, but having one of your own and stuff like that. Um, and, and through there, we are certifying the value created, the value given, the work done by, by the ones who give the food and who dedicate time for preparing the food. And also for those who give lessons and those who give to help to keep up the soup kitchen. So we're, we're trying to certify all the good activities and donors just pay in a straight yes to 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 those who have done so so it's a way of certifying that you that your money goes straight to the to the final uh, 
a value provider, which is this kind of people. So this is mainly the projects we're working. Wonderful. Thank, thank you so much, Rodolfo. Um, I want to introduce our last uh, kind of panelist here. And I want to note something really quickly before. Um, I think it's really interesting, this panel's composition. We have uh, Itzel in Mexico, Avon and Rodolfo in South America, uh, Morant in New York. I'm in Chicago. And <laughs> our, our last speaker uh, is Sonia Lee. She's all the way over in New Zealand. Um, Sonia, tell us a little bit about yourself, your project, or I know you have multiple projects, and then also how you're seeking to, to change society, change the world. I, uh, that's a big question. How do I <laughs> change the world and the society? <laughs> Uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much have, for having me. Uh, I'm super pleased to actually be in the panel with amazing humans like all of you. And uh, uh, I can start uh, uh, from where I met Kony. So uh, I started uh, a company called 37 Coins. Uh, this is a, a, a Bitcoin SMS wallet. So basically, I before that uh, company, I was used to work for a humanitarian organization called A World Vision. Uh, and I was sent to uh, work in the West Africa, Mali. And then I uh, was working at the uh, refugee camp briefly and I met this family doesn't have any way to uh, send or receive money. So the uh, idea become uh, um, uh, building a SMS wallet for Bitcoin. So people who doesn't have an internet can still send or receive uh, Bitcoin on the text message base. And uh, that idea took off and then we moved to Silicon Valley. That's why I met Kony and Big Give. Uh, we were all like starting things. So I'm really, really glad to see this uh, last seven, eight years of, of growth of this coal industry and plus this uh, so many other people who are working on a social impact on blockchain and DLT and virtual currency and all of that. Um, yeah, my, myself an entrepreneur, um, uh, as I explained, and also I'm a collective builder. So uh, in my life, I blockchain came more as a, a philosophy rather than a, a technology. So I'm using a blockchain decentralization, a power of decentralization, which is empowering individuals and communities' autonomy. So I am uh, right now pretty much interested in uh, building a uh, living uh, DAO, decentralized autonomous organization, uh, and help like companies and communities and uh, a collective to create their community autonomy and a massive uh, collaboration tool. Uh, working with uh, um, a community alliance network, there's another protocol that I'm working in, in from Korea and Asia. And before that, I was working for um, uh, 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 DID project in Korea, Commentarium, and before that, 37 Coin, which is uh, SMS wallet. Uh, how do I change the world? Mm, I think it's important, uh, again, to uh, uh, really giving the power back to us uh, and then to uh, uh, the, in either individual or organizations, if in the organization, like a people of the organization, and how can we actually utilize that autonomy uh, to create a bigger decentralized network? And then that would actually fill up a lot of different uh, problems in the world. Uh, again, talk about this a little bit more in the future, but mainly like uh, I'm working on the projects who weave, and then we do a lot of different projects with the World Vision Korea Building Social Action Network. Uh, for the donors and activists and the individual to create the action, not just money, but like action that uh, they are uh, creating with a the value they believe. And we are also working with uh, Impact Collective. Uh, we team up with the UN uh, partners and uh, uh, venture capitals uh, in, in Korea to create the uh, community-driven investment and accelerator program. So everybody can be actually voting uh, for the team they support. And also there is a, a really well-designed incentive model. So everyone in the ecosystem get incentivized and they're using all of this product uh, backed by a blockchain governance tool. Um, yeah, and so also at the end, like not just the technology, but also it's important to build the protocols and uh, agreements and all these uh, promises and then uh, an agreement that we make as a human. So I'm um, a lot of part of my work is designing this uh, experience of people in the organization as well. So that's how I starting really small and all the way big. Great. Thank you, Sonia. And I know it's hard when I ask a question that seems like a big question, but I want you all to know, and I, I really do want to take the time and say thank you all for being here. Um, and it's really important that, to be able to feature people like you at this conference, because you really are changing the world, uh, even though 
um, pride and humility uh, aren't always uh, the same thing, right? Uh, you should be proud of that. Um, you don't have to be humble. Uh, so I'll be proud for you. I'm very proud of all of you. Um, and it's not easy to change the world. So I want to kind of throw it out to you, and, and, and maybe we'll start with uh, Moran, because I, you had a very interesting um, uh, uh, kind of answer to this when we talked beforehand, which is uh, changing the world is hard. What kinds of obstacles are you guys encountering uh, in your projects? What's, 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 what's the drawbacks, or what's the things that are holding you back? Uh, so that's a great question. Uh, UNICEF and my time at the UN has shown me that uh, we have a lot of opportunities to work with a lot of different organizations. And so uh, UNICEF is working very closely with different governments. They're working with different ministries. And a lot of them uh, at this point understand that cryptocurrencies and blockchain is, is something that's going to be used um, by their citizens, by the people, by governments at large. And now uh, I guess the challenge that we face is uh, not only the people, but also the governments are doing different things with cryptocurrencies and blockchain. And so uh, you might go into one country and they already have uh, mobile wallets rolled out. People have an idea of what cryptocurrencies are and, and how it ties into their economic infrastructure. And then the next day you're in another call and the country's like, hey, uh, UNICEF, can you help us think through um, how our country is going to use cryptocurrencies? And so to have all these conversations in a simultaneous manner, uh, you're going from all these different challenges uh, that are very unique to a country and you start out to thinking in systems. And so uh, you have to step back a little bit and you're like, okay, uh, as an organization or as a country that's looking at crypto and they're trying to establish some kind of policy, you have to involve the government, we have to involve the banks. Uh, each of these groups have different perspectives on how crypto should be uh, in place. Some of them want to use uh, public blockchains like Bitcoin and, and the Ethereum blockchain, some are like we want to issue our own digital currency. And so kind of hearing all of that and listening to the users and the governments and the banks and kind of working with them on very distinct strategies that are specific to each country um, is not so much an obstacle as it is in challenge. That's very exciting, but it does take a lot of kind of gravity to dive into each country and establish something very specific. And so the interest is there. It's like, how do we kind of push that interest forward? in like a hundred different directions that are going towards the same way, but then each one will get there a different way. Something yeah. that I've found a lot happening uh, at UNICEF. Yeah. Rodolfo, it sound, I know you kind of had a, a, a similar, but somewhat different kind of drawback that you experience with, when you're dealing with helping people in the slums, uh, for instance, what are you seeing? What kind of drawback or what kind of barrier do you see to kind of making a, a, a even larger good than than what you're already doing? Well, um, but my experience is not working through the governments. Uh, actually, DD it's very government related. Yes, with with EADB uh, Bank, but. Um, Beyond the fact of working with governments, finally you need to go to the slam and work there and and relate with the people there, yes, and implement there whatever big decision is taken. And and what we mainly seen, and this is uh, something I, I shared a little bit before the, the, the talk, the real talk, but it's if you are considering going to a project relating to 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 slams or very low income people. Uh, there are three main issues to consider. One is, it's, um, even though they have access to, to smartphones, yes, sometimes internet access is one of the big issues, yes. The cost of getting access or the, or the possibility of having it constantly uh, available, it's, it's an issue. The second one, um, it's, it's related to the space, to, to the usage of the cell phone. They are not always, there is not always one only person using the cell phone. Usually a mom has a cell phone and its kids, some of them take, steal the cell phone and, and use it for their own stuff. And they, they keep removing uh, elements from uh, apps from the cell phone just to get space to download whatever or to, or they download an app, upload an app, download an app, upload an app, uh, just to keep with everything. So it's not only about smartphone penetration, what you read, but about also uh, capacity, cell phone capacities, no? which is usually very slow, around 8, 16, 32 gigabytes. Uh, mm. 
And the third aspect related to this, it's also uh, related to how they keep their, well, they, their knowledge, yes, or in, in technology. They, some of them think that internet is Facebook or it's WhatsApp, yes, and, and it's way beyond. So, so you need to, 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 to address all the things. You need to think a project that considers all of these aspects and try to solve these kind of aspects. Uh, in our case, we, we made some partnership and, and achieved to give out some cell phone specific, not for this use, they can use it for whatever, but so we know they have this amount of space available. Uh, with, with some other, the Wi-Fi, be sure of they getting, yes, uh, access if they can, or eventually do a project which you also consider to giving them more access, uh, well, uh, data yes in for them uh, and and also consider education now we not only implement solutions but we only work also work on educating the, the people not only in in our case not only in digital aspects but also in financial aspects uh, teaching them how to how to save teaching them how how to consider yes uh, some some personal financials uh, beyond the only usage of only using the the platform and getting the the value from it no so this is our aspects that we we've seen repeatedly when we go to to slams to to the work yeah very 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 interesting I, I i i like to kind of categorize things i have moran had a lot of stakeholders and, and has a lot of stakeholders you have stakeholders too and they have a scarcity of resources, and there's also kind of a need to educate. Um, you know, everybody can jump in, but I, I do want to hear Sonny because you and I had talked about a different kind of uh, maybe drawback or issue or challenge, and that's one of timing. Could you kind of enlighten us on, on how you see timing and, and, and when to kind of use these technologies, and how do you determine that uh, with Weave or your other projects? So the timing of technology is an interesting thing, right? It's a, it's a chicken and egg problem. Like we have a problem and there is a solution with the technology and we can use it right away. But I think the blockchain technology, particularly around the governance tool that I'm working on right now, is not just about like a problem defined and, and a problem is defined already for many, many years and decades and, and how the organization or how human interaction can be more affluent and efficient and uh, technology and and especially in the blockchain uh, and, and scene, and we talking about oh, there is so many technology that that hold that uh, like as a as a DAO. But when I when I try to look at the DAO and a normal human, even even like me that has like eight years of blockchain experience, it's sometimes quite hard to understand what they're trying to do. And a lot of our core uh, blockchain technology is has that uh, tone and manner. You know, it's not so user friendly. And then we are a lot talking about the the biggest problem of blockchain industry is the mass adoption. Uh, but without like having that uh, lowering the barrier, we cannot have a mass adoption. Uh, and, and then also we definitely need a killer app that kills the biggest problem in the world. And we still, I think, going uh, there and we start to getting there, but it's still kind of far away. So I, what I believe is like technology, it should be developed in, in a way, but like also uh, kind of like keep reflecting and then listening what user really wants and what, what, what's needed. And so that's one part. So technology comes with the user's problem defined and the user's behavior and what we need and listening a lot more from there and the design something that is needed and a fit. And another thing is uh, to uh, apply this governance or any sort of solution, the, the users or people who, who want to use that product and need to understand how how these things are working differently. A decentralization, when I came to me like eight years ago, I've never heard of a word decentralization before actually. And because I was living in Korea, everything working, we don't need a blockchain. And we, we can just all like hacking the tools that we have right now. So the companies or country that need blockchain is like really the, everything is not working. So we need a solution then they will kick off. But right now it wasn't. And uh, for me, like one of the problem that I'm seeing right now uh, to, to do my work is 
uh, how can we then un make people understand about decentralization, the benefit of it, and then you know being empowered and having agency of them themselves? So it's, it's become like really really personal, and and this comes with a personal transformation. And uh, how can we actually develop that conversation and connecting with the philosophy of blockchain and uh, providing the technology that they can use? So this is like another bigger uh, frame of uh, what I'm thinking and what I'm working on. Um, and so timing wise, uh, tech shouldn't be neglected. It should keep going and developing, but also as much as energy and effort that we put in on for, to build the tech, we should also uh, 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 like, you know, put it on the building, the playbook of how we can use this. And then like, what would be the best cases? So I don't know if it answers your question, but that's what I see. Uh, but I cannot tell like, which one has to come first. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's hard. I do like what you said about personal transformation, because usually when people talk uh, about this space, they talk about when they found it, like Paul on the road to Damascus or some other kind of big revelation. It's very fascinating. Um, and so I want to be cognizant of time, and I want to get to Itzel and Avon, but I want to. I also want the panel to end on an uplifting note, as opposed to maybe talking about all the bad stuff and how things are difficult. Um, and Yvonne and, and, and Itzel, you could talk about that too, but I also kind of want to hear uh, from you all, um, what gets you excited in the morning? What, what, what keeps you coming back? I mean, there are challenges, uh, education, uh, a lot of different stakeholders that kind of manage it all at once, but why come back? Why keep doing it? Um, why do you do this, Itzel? <laughs> Uh, yes, thank you, Justin. It is a great question. Uh, for helping people, basically, uh, blockchain technology can be a tremendous equalizer, uh, leveling the playing field in different areas. Uh, blockchain, uh, for example, is already supporting 25 use cases uh, by more than 30 user entities. Uh, some of use cases are for financial inclusion in Mexico, cross-border payments in with Citibank, digital identity, land registry, secure data exchange between customs, and so on. Uh, but I would like to focus on, on three use cases that I personally believe had a lot, had a lot of potential uh, because attend three main topics. Uh, one is health, other is education, and the last one is woman empowerment. And uh, I also participate in these uh, uh, projects uh, in the conceptualization and design and the, the team is very proud of them. Uh, this uh, moves forward to, to continue to do and so. And in terms of health, uh, David-19, it, it is a digital solution which uh, has initially developed uh, to allow to provide anonymous information related to COVID-19 uh, used to combat uh, the coronavirus pandemic in a secure and privacy manner. And at the present, this initiative has also incorporated the ability to have trusted uh, authorities to issue digital certificates and is being considered to enhance uh, the trustability of vaccines uh, that, that we, we need uh, next year. So uh, the second one will be uh, about education. Uh, I developed a labor market division is leading a project uh, to help Caribbean Examination Council, uh, CXC, to issue digital academic uh, credential in 16 countries on, of the Caribbean. And the student will have uh, digital wallets to manage this, their credential uh, and the verification will be done against the large chain network. So they will help uh, the people to, to, to pursue to better uh, jobs uh, and have all the academic credentials in a wallet to, to show to the uh, to whatever they want. And the last one is uh, Neonamas, it is a project uh, that we'll be implementing in Medellin, Colombia, in collaboration with Fundación Mi Sangre, uh, that is a social organization co-founded by the artist Juanes. And this digital solution based on blockchain technology will help women to combat uh, gender violence. Uh, accessible from their mobile, uh, they will be able to notarize evidence to record unwanted or violent behavior that will enable administrative processes and start if they want uh, a compliant with the local authorities. So uh, Latin is, uh, lies in enable a scan kind of, uh, in the inclusion and impact use uh, of this technology to reduce economic, social and gender and other inequalities 
and, and encourage you to all to join effort to apply blockchain technology and contribute in an innovative and sustainable way to the countries. Uh, and it's what drives me every way, every day, sorry. And, and I don't know, I'm happy to, to, to contribute with this project and with these use cases. Thank you so much. I, and I'm glad that you made me smile. So I like these answers. Uh, Avon, don't let me down. Uh, what gets you up in the morning? What drives you? Uh, what gives you hope about this space? Well, uh, as I said, uh, Blockchain for Humanity uh, helping project with uh, usage of blockchain technology for social good. And I will clarify what I said before when I was traveling around the world and I was trying to be involved in, in humanitarian causes. And uh, even if you willing to help and you are full of energy and want to help, some, sometimes you just can't. I, I'll give you an example. I, in, in, in Nepal, when it was the, the biggest earthquake in history happened, and we was a group of the people trying to help, and all, all of those uh, organizations only asking for money. And then I was in India uh, trying to be a part of the uh, biggest Spanish uh, uh, NGO, and they said, that, uh, if you're not a uh, doctor or architect or engineer, we are not interested. So and now I'm a part of an organization that uh, helping project, which uh, development platform that allows donation to, to food directly people in Venezuela, for example, or, or social dinner project, as uh, Rodo was mentioning, that uh, certify a human effort which normally is not uh, visible, or platform that uh, creating community currency in Kenya, in the poorest uh, uh, economies and uh, communities in Kenya, and they increase in uh, the economy. It's just uh, incredible. And uh, we, we are uh, showing the, those use cases to the world. And uh, I believe that the blockchain technology, one of the greatest uh, tool that will help to change the society and make it more fair, inclusive, and transparent. So that's what makes me uh, continue in this. Uh, I, I was short, so because I see the, the time. I understand. I, I really loved your answer, though. Um, and I, I want to kind of, we have a few minutes left. I know there's a uh, question up in the chat if anybody wants to ask any of our great panelists, any questions, um, I'm happy to keep asking them questions as long as they'll let me. Um, that's kind of my thing. Um, but please feel free to ask a question. And, and, and while I'm waiting for those questions to come in, I want to kind of see if anybody else has a thought on this. But um, if you could give one word, I kind of, I'm guessing I could get a good word from Avon that he said change. This blockchain uh, and, and this technology represents change. But uh, Moran, Itzel, Sonyi, Rodolfo, if you could put in a word or a few words, what, is, what does this represent to you? Anybody? I think a, a, a word yeah. that comes up quite often in a lot of the work that we do at UNICEF is transparency. Uh, you know, a lot of people question what we're doing in the humanitarian space, how are donations being used, what is UNICEF doing with, uh, you know, in countries. Uh, we do a lot of work with vaccines. Um, so, you know, we get vaccines to the country level and then the, the kind of traceability into the country uh, is it's like, okay, like, can we provide that level of insights? And so blockchain and crypto uh, provides this opportunity to do things in a way that's uh, more public. Uh, we want to you know, take that public information and then distill it down on, on a mobile application or a website. And so we're seeing this new technology uh, play a very instrumental role um, and so transparency is the one word that I, I want to echo today. Great. That was great. That was great. Yeah, I, to I so totally agree. agree. Sorry. Oh, I totally problem. agree with the concept of transparency, but at the end, I think it's it's trust and, and value, no? Because uh, there's no value without trust, and trust is achieved through trust. Okay. More value to whatever is being done because you achieve more trust to to whichever process and and eventually also you will start work i mean you will be able not only big big players will be able to bring the trust because of their names behind such as unicef it's 
trust for itself, yes? Uh, but I mean, it, it also opens the doors to others, like working on DAOs or stuff like that, like, like some of you were saying. Um, I think that that trust is is one of the of the big things here because it really helps. It, it, it removes the player from the middle, not from the middle, from from being the focus of, 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 of in what you are trusting. You can start trusting in in the project itself and in the in the processes of the project, and not necessarily on the people. Yeah. Itzel, do you have a word that you would leave the, the, the listeners with? Yes, uh, for me, it will be potential and, and impact uh, for social inclusion. Uh, blockchain provides direct support to vulnerable populations. So that's the main reason why I'm trying to work with that. Sonia, I got a, a, a one of the questions here, but I want to get Sonia and, and, and Yvonne's words before I turn to that. I would add uh, the, the word freedom, for sure, because uh, today's world is about the control and, and we don't want to be into control and this technology uh, gives us that freedom, say freedom. I already mentioned a few times in my uh, previous sentences, but like uh, empowerment and, uh, and I agree with uh, all of this transparency, freedom and uh, everything else, what uh, you guys are saying. Quite exciting. Mm -hmm. Great. I love it because I'm great at getting sound bites out of you all. I didn't prep them for that question, so that was a little unfair on my part. But um, I do have a question. I'm guessing this is directed at Moran. Uh, why is UNICEF looking at only Bitcoin and Ethereum blockchains? Can you opine on that? That's a great question. Um, so our, our team at UNICEF, we are not you know, blockchain or like Bitcoin experts, Ethereum experts, what actually happens is we have 130 country offices around the world. And a lot of them are keeping tabs on, you know, how different blockchain platforms or different technologies at large are evolving. Uh, so our Office of Innovation acts as um, kind of a driving force for their explorations. And so uh, a country office can come to us and they're like, hey, uh, you know, drones are very popular in this region. Can we figure out what are the fundamentals and how do we implement that? And so a lot of the country offices and governments that we work closely with, um, it, it actually is in the Bitcoin and uh, Ethereum space. So it's not like HQ decides these are the big blockchain platforms and we kind of push it down uh, the country office. Uh, it's actually the other way around and they probably get people in their communities and donors in their communities asking about it. And then that kind of comes back to HQ. And so we really listen to the countries and the people that we work with. And so that's why right now we're looking at the Bitcoin and Ethereum blockchains. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you to all our panelists. You, you're all wonderful. Uh, it was great just getting a chance to meet you. Um, as you all know, I'm a passionate board member of BitGive. And like the panelists here today, BitGive uh, is, is here. And it was the first non-cryptocurrency non and, and distributed ledger non-for-profit. And uh, I think that we're driven by a lot of the same things that the speakers talked about, freedom, change, transparency, trust. Um, and if you'd like to contribute to BitGive, there's going to be a link on the side. But um, I just want to say I, I really do appreciate you all, uh, attendees and, and, and uh, panelists. It was wonderful. And um, I, it made me feel a whole lot better about the world. Um, social impact is a real thing. And technology is a tool for that. You're all doing that. And I am very proud of all of you, as I said earlier, and you should be proud too. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. And thank you, Connie, also for doing this. Thank you all so much. Um, I, it's such a pleasure to have all of you with us today. Um, you're all doing amazing work. Um, I, I hope we can invite each of you back next time so you can dive more into what you're doing in more detail. Um, I do think um, we did an excellent job with such a full panel today of really getting some of your thoughts out there. So um, I really appreciate it again. And thank you, Justin, for moderating this panel. You did an excellent job. We had, we had a pretty big panel for this one. <laughs> thank you very, okay. very much for having us here. Absolutely. Yes. Unfortunately, we didn't get to listen Justin's thoughts. 
but he shared with them with us before the before, before the panel. Yes, and he actually has the pleasure of closing the event um, in about I know, half I know. an hour. So, yes, so well, thank you all. So wonderful to see you guys, and um, you know, especially in these COVID days. <laughs> I know it's, it's, you know, we'd much rather be in person. Some of you I've never met, some of you I've known for years. Um, and I hope that we can, you know, do this in person sometime very soon. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. See you again. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.